Hi, my name is Luke Jones and welcome to my first uh, webcast lesson. Um, it's the first time I've ever done anything like this. Um, I'm not sure how things are going to work out. Um, so please bear with me and uh, we'll give it a go. Um, what I want to do is to pull out a couple of key concepts from my lectures that traditionally people have uh, trouble comprehending and from some of the emails I've been getting recently um, it's kind of led me to, to do this. Um, so today I'm going to start by talking about state change. Um, now the state change problem comes about when we, we're trying to find out whether a particular substance, like some kind of drug, or a particular experimental technique, it could, the problem comes around when we try to prove that that particular drug or particular technique has an effect on the internal clock. Okay, so let's, let's take an example. Let's take the example of um, amphetamine. Okay? We know from the animal work that there's good evidence that amphetamine speeds up the internal clock. Um, now we want to prove this in human beings. Okay, now how do we go about this? Well, here's a simple idea, or a simple, naive way of going about it, and this should highlight what the problem is. Okay? So let's, let's imagine we have two different um, situations. Okay? So we have the person's behaviour when they're on the drug, okay? so when they're on amphetamine, and the no drug, when they're not on the drug. Okay? Now, let's, let's assume that when they're um, on the amphetamine, that their internal clock is going to be going at a faster rate than normal. Okay? So, on the uh, 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 internal clock to be for the drug, and internal clock to be for the no drug. Okay? So, let's just imagine that our hypothesis is correct, and amphetamine speeds up the internal clock. Okay, so, in the no drug condition, let's assume it doesn't really matter what the numbers are, but let's just assume that um, for every millisecond, okay, for every millisecond, we get one tick of our internal clock. Okay? And under the drug, we're assuming that the clock is running faster. Okay, so in this condition, we assume that for every millisecond, we're going to have two ticks of the internal clock. Okay, so this, in, under the drug, the internal clock is going twice as fast. Okay, so what we're going to do, we, in our naive experiment, we're going to test this person off the drug and we're going to test the person on the drug, okay? So we'll give them a really simple task. Simplest task we can come up with, we'll use pair comparison, okay? Now, in a pair comparison task, all that happens is we give the person one tone, please listen to this tone, so say this tone is 800 milliseconds long, and we give them a second tone, so, say this one is 400 milliseconds long, and we simply ask the person, please listen to these two tones, please tell me which one is longer, please tell me how much longer you think it is. Okay? Now, so let's work through what would happen if we did this with a person in our no drug state. Okay? Well, we know that their internal clock is ticking at one tick per millisecond. Okay? So I play this tone to this person off, when they're off the drug. And so for an 800 millisecond tone, they will accumulate, obviously, 800 ticks. I play them the 400 millisecond tone, obviously again, they're going to accumulate 400 ticks, okay? So remember, the output of the internal clock, the amount of ticks they accumulate during this period, that is their subjective impression of how long it lasted for, okay? So this person, when I ask this person which of these two tones is longer, then they're obviously going to know that this one, this one is longer than this one. Then, this is the important bit, if I ask them how much longer, then they're going to say, well, it's about twice as long. Okay? So that's, that would be the scenario when they're off the drug. Let's have a look at what happens now, we're, now we put them on amphetamine. Okay, so their internal clock is really faster. And we rerun the experiment. Okay? So this time, when they're on the drug and they listen to the 800 millisecond tone, then they're going to accumulate twice as many ticks this time. So for this 800 millisecond tone, they're accumulating two ticks per millisecond, so they're going to accumulate 1600 ticks. Okay. Similarly, when I play them the 400 millisecond tone, they're going to be running for two ticks per millisecond, 
So they would again accumulate 800 ticks. Okay? Remember these numbers are arbitrary, we're just putting the numbers in to illustrate the point. Okay, now I go through exactly the same procedure with this person now they're on the drug. I say, please listen to these two tones, please tell me which is longer. Well, they're obviously going to tell me that this one is longer because they've accumulated more ticks than here. And the crucial bit, if I ask them how much longer, then they're going to say it's twice as long. Okay? So you can see, if I ran this experiment under this condition and under this condition, I would get exactly the same result, whether they're on the drug or off the drug. They would still tell me that this tone was longer than this tone, and in both conditions they would think this tone was twice as long as this tone. Okay? So, if we did a naive experiment like this, then we wouldn't be able to tell that this drug had had any effect on the internal clock. To get around this problem, what we need is a state change, and this is the state change problem. Okay? So what we need to do is something slightly different. What we need to do is to give them, let them experience the 800 millisecond the 800 millisecond tone in, in, under one state, either on the drug or off the drug, and then we need them to experience the other tone in the opposite state. Okay? So let's run through our example doing this. Okay? So now we're going to introduce a state change experiment. So we're going to give them the drug, and we're going to get them to listen to the 800 millisecond uh, tone, and we know that they're running at 2 ticks per millisecond when they're on the drug, so they're going to accumulate 1600 milliseconds, uh, sorry, ticks. Ticks here. Okay, then we're going to let the drug wear off, and we're going to play them the second tone now off drug, no drug. Okay, and we know here that they're going to be running at 1 ticks per milliseconds, so they're going to accumulate 400 ticks here. Then I ask them which is longer. They'll say this one is longer, just like before, but when I ask them how much longer, they'll say that it was four times as long. Okay? So by comparing this state change experiment with one where we don't change the state, we'll be able to tell that we've actually helped sped up the internal clock. Now, this problem of getting at what clock speed is doesn't just occur for drugs versus no drugs. If you remember in the lectures, I spoke to you about using click trains to speed up the internal clock. Okay, so in this situation, let's get rid of no drug and drug. Let's have clicks and no clicks. Okay, and if you remember, what we, what we discussed was that if we have a tone, this is our tone, whatever it is, say 800 milliseconds, if before they experience this tone, we play them a series of clicks, a click train, then play them the tone, they, their perception is that this tone is longer than it, than it would be if we preceded it by silence. Okay? Um, and we know that this, this is a slope effect, which is something I'm going to talk about in a future webcast. Um, but we have a similar problem here that we have with the drugs. Okay? We know that we can speed up the internal clock by using clicks, versus no clicks, but unless we have a state change, we can't actually prove that we've sped up the internal clock. So we have to do exactly the same thing. And this is exactly what we do do. If you go back and look at when I discussed about clicks, and I discussed um, the uh, experiment by Penton Varak et al, 96, it's a very readable paper, go away and read it, it's on Blackboard. Um, this is exactly what they did. They, they used clicks and they used a state change um, experiment, a state change design. 